If you've ever experienced numbness or pain down below when riding your bike, then this is the video for you. Today, I'm going to talk you through all the different types of saddles and what exactly they mean for your comfort when riding your bike. And I'm especially gonna focus on whether you need to consider getting a cutout. There's so much information out there available on saddles, so we've partnered with Specialized to help explain the differences and the design principles between different seats. Thanks to its body geometry design principle, Specialized has become a global leader when it comes to saddles, and this is for good reason. Body geometry is informed by thousands of bike fit data sets, and this allows Specialized to identify problems that riders are having and then design solutions for them. And those solutions are these saddles. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna focus on the Specialized Power Saddle, the Specialized Roman Evo, and the Specialized Phenom. And that's because these three saddles encompass a very broad swathe of saddle design, and all of them demonstrate different design principles that help riders become more comfortable. Before we jump into exactly how different saddles affect your riding experience and whether you need a cutout or not, we actually need to understand what all the different parts of the saddles do. This is because all the different parts have quite a determining effect on how comfortable you'll feel and on your riding experience. Now I often hear lots of riders say, that saddle looks so uncomfortable because it's hard and thin. Now, I can promise you that there are many determining factors in a saddle's comfort, not just its squishiness. Starting at the back, you have your saddle's flare, and this is how far the sides drop off and how steeply they go down. Now, saddles can have more flare or less flare, and we have examples of saddles here that have both. Then there's the shelf. This is what your sit bones sit on. Now, saddles come in a variety of different widths, everything from 130 mil all the way through to 155 mil. So there really is a seat for everybody's bottoms. The upper of a saddle is usually made from a foam or a gel with a varying level of density. However, recently brands have started doing something which is really cool and 3D printing the upper of the saddle. Now this, the Specialized Power with Mirror technology, is a great example of that. And it allows brands to sort of tailor the saddle that bit more to a rider's fit. For example, the front of the saddle can be squishier to add comfort in the soft tissue area, whilst the area where the sit bones sit, the shelf, is that bit denser to provide more support. Then there's the cutout or lack of cutout as the case may be, but it's common for most saddles to be available in easier designs. And then you need to consider the nose as well. Some saddles have a very long nose and some saddles have a much shorter nose. And this can have a big impact on how comfortable you find a saddle. Then the final piece of the puzzle is the saddle's profile. Now saddles can either be completely flat or they can have a curve. This is known as a kickback and you can see that this Roman Evo has a good demonstration of that here. To work out exactly what type of saddle you need, you need to ask yourself a couple of different questions. The first one revolves around your position on the bike and how long you ride your bike for. Whilst the second one, you need to ask yourself, do you already experience any saddle discomfort? Because that can help you pinpoint exactly what's going wrong. Ask yourself, what is your preferred position on the bike? Is it being tucked in on the drops and in a really slammed position? Or is it riding on the hoods or the tops in a slightly more relaxed one? Then take a note of how far below your saddle height your handlebars sit, because this will determine how far forward you have to roll in which to access your preferred position and this will apply pressure from the saddle. Now, this will be increased or decreased depending on your position, with more pressure being applied when you get onto the drops and less pressure being applied when you're sitting on the tops. Sometimes riders find that when they assume this position, they kind of have to move around quite a lot to get comfortable or they can't hold it for a very long time. And then when they do hold it, they find they start to experience numbness down below. For this reason, the Power Saddle is a very popular saddle amongst amateurs and World Tour pros alike. And if I compare it to the Roman Evo here, 
you can actually see just how much shorter the nose of this saddle is. Now, having a short nose, people find that comfortable for quite a few reasons, but the main one is that if you have a long nose, you can sit on it when you roll forward and it can inhibit you from finding your preferred position or even apply pressure when you're tilted or rotated forward. Whereas when it's chopped off, that's not there to apply that pressure. So it works as a really useful pressure relief. However, not all riders like to have a saddle with a short nose because you might be the type of rider that likes to move around on their saddle when they're assuming different positions. In this case, you're gonna to need to look for a saddle range which has a high amount of variety because you'll want something with a long nose, but also with a cutout to relieve pressure when you assume that forward position. So going back to that second question we need to ask ourselves is, are we already experiencing any pain or discomfort from our saddle? Because actually identifying and isolating that pain can be a really useful diagnostic tool in helping us understand exactly what shape and design saddle suits us the best. For example, if you are experiencing numbness, you should definitely try a saddle with a shorter nose and with a cutout. Now cutouts help relieve pressure down below in your soft tissue area and most importantly help improve blood flow. So they should really work quite nicely to remove some of that numbing feeling you might be experiencing. If you're experiencing pinching, you should consider getting a saddle with a greater amount of flare. This is how steeply it falls away from the top of the saddle. Now this supports your body as it goes away rather than creating a shelf which perfectly flat saddles can do which can pinch your skin. Also, if you're experiencing lower back pain when you're riding your bike, consider getting one with a greater amount of kickback. This is because if you're riding a flat saddle and you've got back pain, your glutes actually have to tense up to support your back rather than being able to put out the wattage you require when you're cycling along. By having a kickback, that does the role that your glutes are currently playing and supports your lower back not only making you more comfortable, but giving you access to some more watts. There's a reason Peter Sagan loves the saddle with a high amount of kickback. Finally, if you feel discomfort through your sit bones after a couple of hours of riding, it's a sign that you're potentially not being supported enough by your saddle. And in this case, you might want to look at going for a wider option. Now, specialized ranges all have a massive variety and this Phenom that I'm holding in my hand here is a really wide 168 mil, so there is truly something for everyone. The place to start, however, is to measure your sit bones. Now, there are guides to this online, but your best bet is absolutely going into a store and asking for some help because it is a little bit tricky. A lot of time has been spent discussing saddle soreness amongst men, and for that reason, saddle technology has advanced as a solution. However, solutions like cutouts to relieve pressure aren't necessarily going to work as well for women. Now, I'm absolutely not best placed to discuss this, so I'm going to hand over to Michelle to help explain the ins and outs of it. I've yet to lead a beginner women's ride or be part of a women's cycling Facebook or WhatsApp group where conversation isn't at some point dominated by talk about saddle discomfort. Former British cycling physio Phil Burt put it very, very well when he said to me, there are more varied presentations of soft tissue among women than men. And as a result, it can be harder for women sometimes to find the right saddle. That doesn't mean that it is impossible. There are very many women's saddles out there, as well as some unisex saddles that some women will find very comfortable. As an example, the Specialized Power Saddle was initially developed with Evelyn Stevens when she was riding for Bell's Dolmens. It was a saddle designed to help her get into an aerodynamic tucked position with a forward rotation without soft tissue discomfort. It just so happened that many men found they also got on with that saddle, which is how it became known as a unisex saddle. For some women, the cutout can become a problem, however, and this is predominantly caused by the harsh border of the edge of the cutout. Now, recognizing this as a problem, Specialized uses body geometry data and it developed what it calls mimic technology. This is a soft insert which mimics the biological entities of soft tissue. This layer is designed to provide the comfort of a pressure relief channel or cutout without the danger of falling into the recess. 
So all the principles that Rupert already described earlier in this video, listening to your body, working out where you're currently experiencing pain and using that as a tool to inform your future saddle choices applies. If the saddle cutout feels that it's not roomy enough, look for a cutout that is much wider. If you're finding that you're falling into it, then something like Mimic technology might well be the answer for you. One other thing that women should be aware of is that because of the basic biological requirements of childbirth, in general, women have wider hips and also wider sit bones. Now, the reason that you want to have a saddle that is wide enough at the rear is that you want to provide enough support for your sit bones. If there isn't enough support for your sit bones, what can happen is the pelvis twists very slightly, and this can create issues that would effectively mimic a leg length discrepancy, which means that one leg is having to stretch further to reach the pedals than the other. And that can have a ricochet effect throughout your bike fit. And to find out if your saddle is wide enough for your sit bones, many local bike shops will have a tool that allow you to measure this and then choose the saddle accordingly. So there you go. Those are the things I think are really important if you are considering buying a women's saddle or looking for one that will help you alleviate pain you're experiencing. So do you need a cutout saddle? Well, as this video has probably shown you, there is a lot at play when it comes to finding the right saddle for your riding. However, I hope this video has helped you determine exactly what type you need and whether you do need a cutout saddle. If you have any further questions, do leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you have found this video useful, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. Now I'll be back soon with some more great tech content and I'll see you then.